Hello, everyone. Welcome to the World Series of Board Gaming Designer Series. Um, my name is Chris George. And I'm Brian Muller. Or, as our friends like to call us, Fire and Ice. <laughs> That's right. That gives you a little hint, if you didn't see it in the thumbnail or the title, of who we're going to be talking to today. Uh, we have the designer, part of the design team for Terra Mystica and Gaia Project, Helga Ostertag. Uh, we, and I am so incredibly excited to pick his brain and just talk about games and design process. How about you, Brian? I am as well, especially that this he, he does a lot of very good asymmetric games that are heavy mm -hmm. games. And we have a few of those at World Series of Board Gaming. It's going to be great to hear about his design process and how he came about uh, making such great games. Yeah. And speaking of the World Series of Board Gaming, if you're interested in competing for that $25,000 prize and title of World's Best All-Around Board Gamer, well, make sure you go and check out our website, WSBGVegas.com. Or you can just join us in Vegas, win the Gaia Project Tournament, have that ring, and show us the bling that Fire and Ice will be proud of. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. I, you don't even need to, to worry about uh, participating in any of the other events. Show up to Gaia Project, win that ring for Fire and Ice, and uh, we're going to cheer your name all night long. Um, but let's get right over to Helga and our, our interview with Helga because... I, I'm really excited to talk to him, and uh, but be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because you have a chance to win a copy of Gaia Project. More details of that near the end. Let's turn it over to Helga. Here we have Helga Ostertag, designer of Gaia Project. Helga, thank you so much for jumping on the show and talking with us this morning. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, I'm fine. I already had to work on some of my new game design, so I'm really in the mood to talk about game design. So yeah, I'm fine. Amazing. And it's That's great. Uh, it's an honor to meet you and to chat with you guys. Well, b believe me, the honor is all on this side of the table, the proverbial table, the computer screen. Uh, we're just so thrilled to have you here. One of, in my opinion, one of the most pro prolific designers out there. Uh, Gaia Project is currently ranked number 11 on Board Game Geek, uh, in addition to, to Terra Mystica and your other projects. But before we get into Gaia Project and talking about that game in particular, uh, I, I'm wondering if you could walk us through your, your, your history, your design process. Um, when did you start designing games? Oh, uh, we actually were a quite uh, playful family. Uh, gaming was uh, always a big part in our uh, yeah, family history, actually. Um, when my father studied, um, I already was five years old, I think. And when his buddies from, from, from his age at this time uh, came over to play games, Often they needed a fourth player. And so I was invited to the table very early <laughs> on. And my three years younger brother also joined this when he was old enough. So we all already in the early 80s played a lot of board games. And that's how I was introduced into the hobby. And I remember we had one weekend when our mother was away. She visited someone and our father sat together with us at the table and said, Let's design a game of our own. And then we started to make our first game. It was just fun for us. And um, yeah, we, we played it quite a few times because it was our game and we liked it very much. And yeah, that's when the spark hit me to design games. It Amazing. Time. And How? later in, <laughs> in, in wow. the school, I had to do a project on my own and I decided I, I want to do a board game. But then I already had quite, uh, uh, I had a big task in front of me and I failed to finish what I had in mind, but still I was working, <laughs> I, I think I was 13 or 14 years old, and I was working on it and I, I noticed, okay, to do a really good big game, not just a simple running game with one dice and run around a circle, it's a little bit more complicated. And so <laughs> I started to think about designing board games at this young age. Amazing. So it was it, it was from the get go that you were did you always want to be like a board game designer um, as as a profession or or were not there were there profession. other things? Not as a profession, but I think uh, I, I just like the idea to to be able to create a game on 
yeah, all by myself and yeah. to have a finished product in in shots someday. So I like this idea not to, to be a professional, but just to yeah, to, to make it work and finish something. And actually the real uh yeah, step into the hobby or in the industry. I, I did with my brother, together with my brother. We we did some designing and we uh, had some prototypes we sent to Hans and Glück, the German publisher. And they it's actually an early prototype of what later became Terra Mystica. It was 1996. And uh, just a few years uh, before that, um, Catan, or at this time, Settlers of Catan hit the market. And we played it quite a lot, and it was a big influence on our first uh, uh, big steps. And then we 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 invented something called Gorod. It was Russian. We have Russian in school, and it's a Russian name for city because it was about building cities. And as you can see in Terra Mystica, you have to build cities. So this part <laughs> uh, was already there in 1996, and yeah, we we, we brought it to Hans and Glück, and they took our prototype and tested it and actually considered to do the game, but yeah, another game was better. So they, they sent it back to us and then, yeah, we, we, we had some meetings with them. And uh, I, I think it was five years later that we decided, okay, it's really difficult to get a publisher to do your game, to publish the game. And we decided to start our own small company. It was uh, Typical Spiele, our first uh, steps into uh, this industry as uh, self publishers. And yeah, we went to Essen. It was uh, in the year 2004. Yeah, 2004. And we did our first two card games, Desperados and Hatzfatz, were, were they called. So these were just fast playing card games. And we got quite attention at these days because internet wasn't that bigger thing at these times. Right. So we're looking around, uh, looking for new things, new companies. And so, uh, yeah, that's how, how we met a lot of people. And we were on this company for a few more years, but it wasn't that financially successful. It was more about the attention. Really. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that's how I got into, into game design. <laughs> That's that's really cool, and that that's that's awesome that it was with your with your brother as well. That's that's on sale as as well, because yeah. I was I'm I'm looking at your board game geek uh, roster right now, and I can see uh, Desperados and uh, and Guru was also under this publishing company. Yeah, and and, and also our first board game, not just a card game, that was Kaiwai. Mm. And. Um... Yeah, there is this Fair Play Scout list at the Essen Game Fair. And uh, it's very important uh, because uh, it reflects which games are trending at, at the fair. And we were quite high on this list. So a lot cool. of people came by, oh, we heard of this game. And it was quite a big box. We forget to double fold the map. <laughs> so we had quite a big box. <laughs> For advertising purposes, it was quite good because this right. was a screen to advertise it. The people only carried these big boxes around with them and everyone saw it. Oh, we have seen this game everywhere. Everyone has, has this under their arm. So, uh, yeah, it went quite good for us. And, yeah. So, that's really that's really cool. It's not not only where you were because sometimes you consider like the size of the box for shelf space now, publishers, right? But it, I, yeah. I I'm picturing everyone going around a convention holding this giant <laughs> this giant. That's that's free that's free publicity for sure. People wanting yeah, to stop it, by it your food. Our intention, but uh, it, it came out of a mistake. But then it uh, went this way. And, <laughs> wow. Uh, so the we foundations of it. Rome <laughs> stole this idea from you. That's that's what we're hearing right now. That 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 you had it first. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. And so and so was two thousand four your first time to really put yourselves out there as a publishing company to go to the, to go to the spiel. That was your first yeah. first sort of spiel experience. And we we, we attended the uh, following years as well. We had. Uh, Highway in 2005, we had Google in 2006 or 2007, I'm not sure about it anymore. And then we, the, the last game we published was Galactico. Mm -hmm. I think okay. this was 2007 or 2008, I'm not sure about it, uh, but yeah, you can look it up, it's for BGG. Yeah, BGG and, says and 2009, that, but these these oh, things yeah. always, you know, yeah, sometimes they're, they're 
delayed or they they flip on the cycle right if it if it was released in october or something yeah so um but then we realized yeah we don't make a lot of money out of it actually we didn't have any profits we just yeah balance our, our our spending so then we decided yeah if it's not that profitable we should quit it and uh yeah then we decided to quit a small self-publishing company, but I stayed at uh, game designing and I met a lot of people because of our previous experiences in Essen and all these small fairs. And uh, here in Frankfurt, there were a lot of people in, in the area I live near Frankfurt and uh, there are a lot of circles of players and uh, some of them contacted me. So I had quite a community of players around me and cool. showed them my prototypes. And then there was... Uh, a group of people they call themselves clicken abend it translates like uh yeah click is like best buddies and uh, okay. evening so like like evening with best buddies that's that's how they call it but the german name for it and they do video um re reviews of board games and uh so they they met us at one convention somewhere in in, in germany and then they contacted me and said, hey, we live near you. Just come over for our play session. So I joined them and I showed them the now very advanced prototype of Terra Mystica. And then they said, come over. We will have a meeting on, on Mediterranean Island next year to bring together publishers and board game designers. And um, that's a good prototype you have there. And you should find someone. And there I met Uwe Rodenberg. He also attended to this meeting. Cool. On um, Mallorca, it's an island from from Spain in the Mediterranean Sea, and we, we stayed there for about two weeks to just play games and show our prototypes and meet publishers. And Uwe said, "Yeah, I like it, nice. and I I will find a company to publish it. I know a lot of people, and yeah, there's this cool friend of mine. He lives near you, and I." always wanted to do something with him. And this friend of his, it's um, Frank Heeren, who became the publisher, the, the, the founder of Feuerland Spiele. And uh, he actually lived in the same city as me. Amazing. So a lot of meters away and it was good. We had a lot of playtesting together and during this playtesting sessions, Jens Drögemiller entered as well. And then Terra Mystica, was published and that was the founding stone for Feuerland Spiele. So all the success of Feuerland is based on Terra Mystica coming to Essen and to the gaming world in 2012. And yeah, then it's something big. I, I knew it. it. It was big. On the, on the game fair in Essen, a lot of people came and it was sold out really quickly. And um, yeah, so then I worked on on, uh, on follow up games and because of what I told you, uh, this day in my childhood with my father when we designed our first game, yeah, it actually was a space game about space colonization. <laughs> and, and, and way back at the very beginning, way back. And so I, I thought, well, maybe the next thing to do after Terra Mystica is to place it in space because a lot of the players, the feedback we got was, yeah, it's nice but terraforming it should be in space so <laughs> we took it to heart and said yeah well if, if the players want it uh, why not we we could do the next step and implement some of the ideas yeah so that's the story led to us from from doing termistica to yeah designing gaia project because of the feedback we got amazing i've I'm I'm bursting with questions here. Um, so, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I love it. I, I find it so fascinating. I, I love that you just casually got to design board games and play prototypes for two weeks on a beautiful island, in Mallorca. Exactly. Like you're you're describing heaven to to most of our to most of it our viewers. <laughs> and the funny side note is, um, we rented a thinker, actually two thinkers. That's these old farmhouses now uh, they uh, used for tourists to have a, a nice uh, flat yeah. and a swimming pool and a lot of space and gaming tables and so on. And one of the um, game designers there uh, who initiated maybe I think to, to place it there, 
it was uh, Ralf Zulinde, and he had the game of the year called Finca, okay. published by Hans and Glück. Oh, <laughs> and he was one of the players there, and uh, Hans and Glück also. They also went there, and so it was uh, was just a nice gathering of people from the industry, from the publishers, from from the authors, the game designers. So yeah, we had a lot of fun there. Wow. And not only playing games, we also went to to the ocean and nice snorkeling, some speech boat racing and stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. very great time. That sounds like that sounds like a, a fantastic time. Um, well, before we talk a little bit about Terra Mystica and, and Gaia Project, because I I'm I'm a huge fan of both of those games. Um, I I want to talk a little bit about how 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 you created these contacts in the industry because it's it's sort of a, a longer process you went to your first spiel in 2004 and then terra mystica didn't come out until 2012 but all throughout that for any budding designers out there um you can talk a little bit about the importance of of creating those those connections and those social circles and 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 maybe even uh connecting with Uwe and how that that helped. See, it, what I love about this hobby is that we we build each other up, right? I, I feel like yeah. it, if you're into it, you're into it. And and I haven't met a board gamer that, that I don't like. And I feel like, it, is there a similar, it seems like there is, there, there's a similar community from the design perspective and, and how would one take their first steps into uh, getting more into that community? Well, I think nowadays to start a small publishing company is a little bit uh, more difficult because there are so many publishers on the market. Yeah. When we started 2004 as a new small publisher, we got a lot of attention because uh, yeah, there weren't so many as nowadays. Oh, and cool. um, what was helping was that uh, we also have the print media and they um, did a lot of interviews with us I think every game we published at least was uh, reviewed in the German print magazine Spielbox, which is very important still. And But then also all these online reviews came in and all these uh, video blogs and so on. So we got a lot of uh, um, people asking us to, to do an interview with them or to have a review uh, game uh, to, to give away. So... Yeah, we just did all that. We had these requests and we just answered them. And um, then we had people coming over telling us, yeah, we have this small convention, we have this big convention, do you want to come over? And so we just looked uh, what was possible for us to do because Germany is a small country, but still too big to attend to every convention that's totally. somewhere in, in the country. And we were based in Freiburg, that's very southwestern Germany, near the border to France and Switzerland. So everything we wanted to do was from there. At least my brother, I already studied in Bremen, but we, yeah, we, we had to figure out how, how to, to do the logistics of to, attending to all these conventions. And I was a student at this time, so a student budget. And right. yeah, small steps, but um, what was quite important was the meeting for... Um, game designers in Göttingen, which is a, a yearly uh, event. And uh, I, I don't know what the name of the founder, but there's a game designer uh, based in, in Göttingen. He already is 80 years old nowadays, but he, he started this uh, convention to bring together game designers and publishers. And But there it's difficult to get a lot of attention because you have about 200 game designers. You right. Have yeah. Um, enough tables to present your games, but yeah, they, the, the the people from the publishing companies, they scroll along and just have a look if it's interesting, and sometimes they sit at your table and you have to invite them, and yeah, it's, you you have you have to, to uh, be very patient. Right. You need a lot of patience. And sure. uh, yeah. also over the years, the, the contacts I had also, I wrote letters to publishers. I contacted them via email and uh, talked about my my prototype and so on. And afterwards, when we had a small company, it was another thing because then people knew we were out there and they, they, they wanted to contact us. So I, I think it built up over the years. I right. attended conventions. I had my small uh, game circles. 
uh, I lived in Bremen, where uh, also there's a gaming community. And I think in every bigger city in Germany, we have these communities, this, this open communities. A cool. lot of gaming also is private in Germany, organized in private circles, but you find open gaming communities in every bigger city. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, I attended to all these occasions and made contact, made friends. And um, so over the years, I, I think, um, yeah, I, a, lot, a lot of people they knew me and um, meeting Uwe was, I, I didn't know him before. I, of course, knew his games, but uh, we met there for the first time. And uh, yeah, it was just fun to, to sit together, to play, test each other's prototypes. And then uh, yeah, it clicked. Uh, he said, it's a, it's a cool game. It needs work through and the design process isn't finished, but yeah, it's it's good in its core, and so um, he he was uh, guiding us to to the final stages because he has a lot of contacts. Uh, so this was helping quite a lot. Yeah, mm. that's that. It's I find it so so lovely about that community. But now I also want to ask you a question: How because I notice on BGG either when you were designing with your brother to begin with, or now that you've 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 partnered up, what is the um, impact of designing with a partner, right? You, 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 and uh, Jans are credited for as as both the the main designers of Terra Mystica and Gaia Project. Uh, and then I saw that that you and your brother are credited as as partners. And uh, it's it's a weird thing because obviously so many people have an impact upon design, right? Everyone who you talk to, everyone who gives you feedback, all the play testers, etc. But w what is the importance of or how much is the importance of designing with a partner just to have somebody to to bounce ideas off off of uh, versus yeah, you versus you yourself? Of, I, I normally in the early days of our small publishing company, I was uh, talking on the phone to my brother, and then we, uh, we we shared ideas, and then we we talked the next day, and uh, it goes back and forth, back and forth, and some of the ideas were good and crystallized out and. Um, yeah, we didn't meet in person so often because I already lived uh, in, in Bremen at this time. But when I visited him, then we could uh, actually try out what we had in our mind. And uh, yeah, I think it was a good thing that we were at two different locations. We had our small groups to test it there and then brought to, together what our experiences and what the feedback was. And I hadn't to do it all on my own because yeah, I had someone who who would reflect it with me, and uh, he who would would talk it through everything, every detail, every feedback we had, and every idea wasn't just um, something I had to test with a group the next time, but right. we we could talk it into the smallest detail. Is is it good, or should we do it another way? So I liked it to to have someone to talk uh, it in detail through because with my play testers, they all want to give feedback. But they not always have the same ideas as I. Yeah. And with a partner, we normally come together to share some principal ideas of how the game should flow and how it should feel and what should be the the the, the main aspects of the game. Right. Yeah. Totally. Uh, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, and now let's. Uh, I guess let's move into Terra Mystica. Terra Mystica yeah. territory. Um, how how long were you designing Terra Mystica? I mean, you mentioned that the the feelings of that space colonization was all the way back with with you and your father. How how long from when you started Terra Mystica to when it was published? I, I would say Terra Mystica um, it was about eight. So yeah, I, I think it was um, twelve to fourteen years. Wow. But you, you have to know there were a big gap in between. I of designed course. it and then I put it aside and maybe three months, half a year later, I took it out again. So at the beginning, when the first prototype was there, which I did, the start was with my brother, but then we we, we skipped it and we said, okay, now no publishers interested in it. And yeah, But I based the, the further development on that. And um, so I had phases in which I was quite intense working on the game design right and then had had to rest 
And uh, after, I, I think these phases of wrath, where it just could settle, could sink in, they were quite important as well. Because um, after that, I tried to remember what was it all about. And the good things, they stuck out. Uh, they, the, the the most attractive aspect of the game of the what what is the feeling about or what was um, interesting for the players these things I remembered first so I think all these phases in between where it was just resting they also helped to get rid of all the the things that didn't work out and didn't quite fit in or weren't so interesting so yeah it was 12 to 14 years roundabout. Wow. And the last two years after I met Uber were the most intense ones because we met almost weekly to, to test sometimes at the end twice, three times a week. And uh, I, I remember quite a lot of gaming sessions where we played until the early morning hours just because we were so into the design process. And yeah. It's also when it started that I took Jens into the picture because um, when I met Uber, Jens wasn't anywhere around. But uh, Uber said, yeah, he knows this friend of his, uh, uh, cool, Frank, and there's another game designer he likes and uh, he values his opinion, that Jens, because Jens did uh, one game, Scepters of Savender, which was published by Lookout Games. Cool. was main publisher at this time, or one of his main publishers so yeah he brought us together and in the process of of developing uh, terra mystica even further we decided we needed more different factions when when i met uber it was seven color seven landscapes seven factions and we decided yeah we could do 14. we have the back side of the board and that's when jens came into the picture he, he was my main play tester together with frank but he contributed quite a lot of ideas for the new factions so that's how okay. he came into being my partner in this game my code and so did he help you out a lot with the doing the balance of the asymmetric fa factions was that yeah a lot? yeah he that helped quite a lot with the balance of the factions and also he came up with ideas for the factions so yeah okay that's pretty cool yeah i i I love variable player powers in a game. Uh, was this your first time really experimenting with um, with variable player powers or factions, or, or or was that present in some of your previous games? No, no, that was the first time. It was the first time. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. Well, Bri yeah, because Brian, Brian, and I were talking a little bit before about about balance, right? Uh, about yeah. the the question of balance, and that's always going to be in play when uh when you have these these varied powers right some can seem super powerful some some people lose and say well mine is not as powerful <laughs> um, i think i think terra mystica might have been my my first um great asymmetric game that i ever played so it, that i'm sure that there's a lot of work that has going to balance and it's very easy for us players to to become critical of uh Oh, this is this is easier to play, or this is harder to play, and we we give that feedback, but we with with we don't put we haven't really put in all the time that you have put into to figuring that out. Yeah, we we did this uh, competition to to get ideas for fan factions for Terra Mystica, and we got quite a lot of uh, input from all the players and the fans, and uh, yeah, we we said that they should at least play their ideas three times to see if it works out. But actually, three times to play one faction isn't quite enough to grasp <laughs> at least a little bit of uh, the balance con balancing concepts that are necessary to balance out a lot of factions. And we, we do this now on EGA and uh, the, the balancing and play testing for these fan factions. And that's, for me, interesting as well, because I can re-evaluate the, the, the process of balancing. And I, I think we did quite a good job. We know, of course, the park is problem, but <laughs> I, I told this uh, episode many times in interviews, but I will do it as well, because we had one playtest session, and um, parkers weren't that bad at this time. 
and I managed to play them quite good and uh, had a big win with the Fakis. And after that, uh, the other testers, Frank and Jens, uh, said, no, they are too strong. They have to be weakened. They have to be nerfed. And um, yeah, they were two against one, so I was the rule over. And <laughs> that's how the Fakis became so weak. Because uh, <laughs> okay. you were too uh, good. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, Important to know that one testing session is never enough to to um, consider the strengths and weaknesses one asymmetric faction is uh, yeah, presenting because you need in, in a game with so many varied setup parameters like Terra Mystica, you need many testing sessions to, to be quite sure about it. So the, the balancing, yeah, I, I think, of course, there are some I think you can't consider enough and yeah we we, we 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 noticed that of course we could run 200 more testing sessions but uh, right. at some point you have to decide okay let's balance enough yeah. yeah yeah the more different factions you have the more difficult it becomes to have them always equal i think maybe that can't be the point of um asymmetric factions maybe it should be enough that some factions do good in many setups and some do better right. in specific setups. So yeah. Right. So we we really we really appreciate how, how great Terra Mystica and how great Gaia Project is with balancing and the asymmetric stuff. And we appreciate all the plays that you've got in to play test it. Sometimes though, um, with the World Series of board games, though and having Gaia Project as one of our favorite heavy heavy games that's played competitively there we do get uh some statistics as well and some feedback from some of the higher level players and there seems to be uh some discussion like well maybe we maybe wsbg should step in and do a little bit of balancing and so we we've talked about that a bit about being cautious because we don't have the experience to balance your game really and we've talked about how we might approach that and uh, because we don't want to cause some faction to become super weak because we stepped yeah. in with our novice eyes and balanced it. And we've, we talked about things like maybe using a bit of a bidding system for competitive play. What's, what sort of things do you think um, would be uh, okay for like WSBG to do uh, for per perceived balance issues? In like a I, tournament I setting. The bidding system is the easiest way to go uh, to, to, to approach this. Because um, on BGA, for instance, you also can uh, play Gaia Project with a bidding system, and I think it works out quite well. Yeah, I love the um, bidding system on there. I was I, playing. I, mean, I was uh, playing a couple games the other night in preparation for this interview. I was like, oh, I got to get more plays of Gaia Project in. <laughs> and at BGA, you could also uh, um, like rule out some of the factions beforehand, so they won't come into play. I think that's also a, a possible way to go about it. So maybe each player can choose one faction which is not playable in this game. And afterwards, you have to choose from the remaining ones and still can implement a bidding system. So okay. it becomes more interesting and you can't just specialize on two factions to play them quite good. And yeah, if they are ruled out, you can't win. So yeah, maybe you should be a, a little bit broader in your approach. I, uh, I like it. That's that's fun. Way. Yeah, I love I love that because I I I was playing I was playing on on VGA the other night and and I was like, oh, I can't I can't wait to wait to try the like the the ITARs. I hadn't tried them yet, and then it was like, oh, banned immediately. I was like, oh no, <laughs> I'm like, what do I do now? <laughs> I was going in with that mentality, thinking, yeah, I w I'm gonna play this. I know I know my strategy, and then the ban just like made me recalculate. I was like, okay, I gotta. I gotta watch the board. Um, for for me, one of the, one of the uh, largest differences. Maybe you could talk about the differences uh, between Terra Mystica and Gaia Project because I feel like they're very they're obviously from the same DNA, but yeah. they're 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 so different. One to me is the is the modular board of mm. Gaia Project versus Terra Mystica. Um, what made you want to switch to that uh, as as you went to the sort of this next iteration? Yeah, well, a little bit more variability was uh, some uh, things a lot of uh, the players asked for. So 
cool. um, map variants. And um, also, we we did this variance where you variant where you could um, as last player rotate the tiles in the setup. So it's also a balancing mm -hmm. factor for the game. Um, but you need to know the game quite well to be able to to profit from that. But I think in competitive play, I would assume that uh, players know what they are doing and they could rotate the tiles as well. And yeah, I, I think it keeps the game fresh if it's not always the same layout for, for exploration yeah. of the, the stars, so, so to speak. And um, yeah, so that's one of the main difference, of course. But then also we had the, the difference in cult tracks transformed into research track, which a lot of players consider to be more thematic and more interesting to play with. And um, also we implemented more variability because we place the tactiles beneath these research tracks and they will be on different spots each game. So you yeah. always have to um, readjust your, your strategy to that. And also the advanced tactiles, I think a lot of the top players, they base their strategies around where is the tactile, the advanced tactile place that I want to, to focus on. So I think that's one of the main aspects. Yeah, variable definitely. And, definitely. Uh, the, the research tracks. Yeah, it, it's it's really brought out a lot of great, that your game certainly brought out a lot of great players at WSBG. One of the, the player who finished second at the World Series board game was the Gaia Project winner. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah so, overall, yeah. I, I read something about uh, people who did uh, uh, digital implementation, Digitize, that's a German-based uh, um, company, and uh, they already did the Terra Mystica implementation, and then they also did the Gaia project implementation. And somewhere along the way of their designing process, uh, I think it was the player doing, or the, 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 the person doing the AI, he wrote an article uh, about uh, the difficulties in uh, programming this AI for a game like Terra Mystica or Gaia project. And he compared it to like, uh, yeah, uh, designing uh, or programming a chess AI or a Go AI. Mm -hmm. And um, these games compared to Terra Mystica or the Gaia project, which is even more complicated, mm -hmm. um, they have so many variables to count into for their decision making and um, let's say go it has a, a board or a map which should have three states it could be empty it could be white it could be black so just three states of one space to be considered in chess it could be empty it could be empty white it could be empty black and it could be occupied by um, what is it seven, eight different pieces, yeah, something like that. So, And Terra Mystica, you have one space, which could be empty, but that could be seven colors. Right. In Gaia Project, it could be eight, nine colors, because it could be a trans-dimensional planet, or it could be an already in Gaia Project, like Gaia planet. So you have just, just the spaces where you base all your actions on that so the, to speak the foundation for the programming so there's a level of complexity in programming and ie which has to make decisions based on this just on the state of the one space and then you have different types of buildings so the complexity is off of off, off the charts and when i read this article i thought yeah well it will take quite some time until uh, computer ai is competitive with humans and that's still valid until today because um, the complexity of the game right. is above, above chess. Yeah. And I think the players that are good in, in Gaia Project, I think they will grasp a lot of other games in their uh, complexities as well. So it yeah. doesn't astound me that the second player was very good in Gaia Project because uh, to be so good on this level, I think they will be good in other games as well. That's that's definitely a good. That's definitely a good point. That's pretty neat about the uh, complexity. I took a little AI when I went to when I was in computer engineering in college, so I know I know a little bit about what you're talking about <laughs> going through all the decision trees and stuff like that. It's very complex, but it's kind of neat that uh, the the human intuition for the for the expert players can kick in and 
and be stronger than the AI is pretty, pretty yeah. interesting. At least for now. <laughs> At least for now. <laughs> At least for now. Um, um, and go go ahead, Brian. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna go on to a, to another question. There there was. So some talk that you were at uh, Gen Con in 2022 and that yeah, you had brought right. something fun with you. That's what I was going to talk about too, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> same, same spot there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it was 10 years of uh, Feuer und Stiele. So uh, the publisher decided to invite me over and uh, to, to, be, uh, to be there at the booth of our partner publisher, Capstone Games. And I, yeah, in the mornings I presented, I think, the fan factions for Terra Mystica, we had, or no, it was the other way around. In the mornings I presented a new upcoming Terra Mystica Age of Innovation, and in the afternoon I played fan factions at two tables. Cool. Simultaneously. So, yeah, it was <laughs> nice to meet players, gamers from the United States and uh, also some from Canada over there. Yeah, it was, was good. I, I could compare it to the Essence Fair. And in Essence Fair, you have a lot of uh, booth from publishers who actually want to sell their games. And I think in the, at Gen Con, there were a lot of tables just to, to play, not to sell. I think that's the main difference. At Gen Con ha was more focused on just playing. And Essen is, yeah, it's where you, you bring your games to the market. So they all want to sell as well. Cool. But and and gamers, what can, uh, what can you tell us? Nice people all over the world. So <laughs> that was much different. <laughs> um, what, what can you tell us about Terra Mystica Age of Innovation? Uh... Well, after we were finished with Gaia Projects, um, the Essen Game Fair and so was over, then the publisher approached me and said, OK, so now we have some ideas uh, how to, 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 to bring the brand further on and um, one could be to get even more variety and um, yeah maybe we do um, more factions for Gaia project as well we had our first expansion fire and ice for Terra Mystica where we introduced six new factions but our experience was it's very very difficult to implement even more factions into an existing system so mm -hmm. Jens and I decided no we don't want to do more factions for Gaia project or even for Terra Mystica, it was just too much work yeah. with two effects. And I was interested in doing a um, more open approach for Terra Mystica as well. Jens said, no, he has too many projects in his uh, job. So I did it on my own. And um, yeah, it's more variable than the normal Terra Mystica. So we have the faction color. Then you decide your faction. So you, you, you will put it together module at the start of the game. You decide an um, ability for your stronghold. And um, we implemented a new system, which is more near to the research tracks in Gaia projects. So cool. yeah, the, the tiles are changing. And something like the advanced techs called innovations, but new resources as well. So yeah, there's a lot to discover. And uh, we also included a new illustrator, a new artist to do the illustrations. So it has a complete new look as well. And um, today I already had a peek at uh, the rules. So I had to overview, to, 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 to look over the rules as cool. they're already written. And I think it will be ready summer or at least autumn. Yes. That's so exciting. Oh, I'm so excited. I've, I've definitely played more Terra Mystica than I have have Gaia Project. Um, and I think that might just be, I I like, well, I've, Terra Mystica was my first one. So I, I'm more familiar with it. And, um, and I like the fantasy more than the sci-fi too. Do you find that there's, there's a, a distinction between those two themes for you? Or it's just, uh, you the people wanted no, sci-fi. Uh, your point is... Uh... The point of many players have they they either like sci-fi more or they like the fantasy setting more. Um, yeah, I think it comes down to the personal taste if you if you like more sci-fi or more fantasy. But what a lot of players say, they find Terra Mystica to be more cutthroat because of the presence on the map. You can cut each other off mm -hmm. more easily Definitely. in Terra Mystica than in Gaia Project. Uh, yeah. The base is more open in Gaia Project, and if you use the QIC. Um, 
the green cubes to yeah. uh, advance uh, your range, then you can come to any planet if you spend enough resources. So it's not as, as restricted as uh, Terra Mystica. Right. I think that's also one some people like or dislike. Um, some players say, oh, yeah, I, I like it more on Terra Mystica because there's this race about space that's right. very, very narrow. And in Diaporship, yeah, if I don't settle here, then I will fly to another planet. So there are some 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 people who, who like the space team more, but I think most players prefer actually the the map presence of yeah Terra Mystica. Yeah, definitely. That's I'm a fan of both of them. I, I I think they're both super <laughs> great. I, I I enjoy both of them. The, and just the fact that you get uh, new experiences with each, and I'm very excited for the for the new version as well too to have even more new experiences. It, it, are, is there a lot? Did you uh, come up with a lot more as, new asymmetric ideas for the for the new game? Is there anything that you can spoil for us? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we have um, seven colors, so that's that stays the same. Then we have um, twelve different, I would call it, faction abilities. Okay. Cool. And then we have um, what is it? Fifteen different stronghold abilities and then you can combine it with a lot of uh, these innovation tiles where each player can get up to a three in one game and they all will bring you some points or some abilities as well and yeah so the, the, the number of combinations that's quite big yeah, yeah. so if you combine Seven colors with 12 factions with 16 different um, stronghold abilities. You have a lot of combinations. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, the, the numbers change throughout the design process. So I don't have it right now. <laughs> you okay. Calculated it. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the, the, the number of variety did go up. And also, we have now 12 different, uh, we'll call it favors or tactiles, basic tactiles. And they will also uh, be mixed up at the setup, so um, the variety goes up as well. And I think it's eighteen different invention tiles. So, wow! Yeah, you, you can try out a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And also <laughs> so it is. Have... So it is Terra Mystic on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. And uh, also we have besides the power actions, we also have book actions. Books are a new resource we introduced. And um, you use them to get these inventions as well. But we also have uh, book actions, and they are also variable. So there will be three out of six possible book wow. actions in the game. Just but talking about the design how do I get process. The, how, do I get this, yeah. how do I get this game before everybody else? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe you should try to contact Capstone if you could get a <laughs> free game review game something like that yeah are, just are just they talking... going to go through kickstarter oh, or yeah. is this going to be straight straight through capstone Brave, you know that right by capstone it's not the king starter game. yeah okay cool very good that's good for people to know well yeah i feel like Ter termiska is so so well known at this point you know you, you can put it out on shelves and people will go oh, yes thank you very much <laughs> yeah and uh, we also had this uh, other version of terra nova where one approached us to have a simplified version, um, which also uh, hit the, the game market just uh, last year, cool. October. And I think it also brought a lot of new players to the game who liked it a little bit easier and more streamlined and yeah. to be playable in a shorter amount of time, which is a need for many people nowadays to keep it short. <laughs> Did you have a big big hand in that the the Terra Nova? What was your what was your role in, in in streamlining that game? Oh, I was just testing a little bit of of uh, the game, but um, the main main work was done by the author in, um, whose um, name is on the box. Well, I mean, it's I would say sixty percent is still Terra Mystica, and I mean maybe forty percent is his work. So. Yeah, okay. I, I have a part on the earnings sets <laughs> for sure. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's great. Um, that 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 they were consulted, or that they that they consulted you rather. Um, 
Uh, well, we don't want to take up, we've taken up a lot of your time, uh, Helga. We don't want to take up too, too much more, but I do, I do have a couple like last, last quick questions yeah, for sure. you. Um, other than yourself, who are your favorite uh, designers and like, what, what what are some of your favorite games like that you, that you enjoy playing either, either new or old? I, I, I must say this is something uh, like um, I have some games I play a lot. Mm -hmm. And after time, they wore out because I played them so many totally. times. And then maybe new games come in and, and I play these games. So normally there, there are a lot of authors, but I, I sh should say throughout the time, of course, it was Klaus Teuber. He was very influential for my gaming life. For sure. And uh, I met him personally also so twice or three times. He's a, quite a nice guy. I would say this was was to kick off my 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 gaming career, and Uwe as well because I, I think he comes up with a lot of interesting game mechanics and I play a lot of his new games as well. His older ones, Agricola, we played it quite a lot, but it's already an older game now for me. I I still and, pull it out, yeah. Yeah, I I I haven't played it for quite a time now, but. What I do play a lot with my wife, we just play two player games or games playable at two player account. Um, we played uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak. I oh, nice. played, played it well over a hundred times and that's wow. quite a number. So I would say from the last years, this is maybe my favorite game because cool. I can play it so many yeah. times with her. Yeah. Also, I can play um, Red for the Galaxy. Yes, nice. And nice. Uh, I think it's it's a fantastic game because it's quick. Yeah. And it's yeah. so variable. And yeah, if we want to play a quick fast game, okay, let's play uh, Race for the Galaxy and another one and another one. So, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I like the concept of a game that's playable in a fast time and still is uh, so so different each time. And, yeah. yeah. And it's great at two as well. Yeah. Favorite designers, well, um, so that would be Tom Lehman. <laughs> and I also do like some games of Vladimir Suki. Um, Under oh, the yeah. Cities, I played a lot as well. And yeah, sometimes Friedemann Friese, the guy with the green hair, German <laughs> game designer. Yeah. Power uh, Grid is maybe yeah. his most known game, but I also play other games with him. When I lived in Bremen, I played a lot of games with him and tested his his prototypes, and he cool. tested mine, so uh, we knew each other well. So yeah, that's just yeah, the just of off the top of your head, right? The, the, I feel there like so there's some of the great. There's so many great games. There's that's that's amazing. That, that part of our hobby you mentioned, but with Arnak and Race for the Galaxy, both are kind of card based. Uh, do you have yeah. any desire to go into the deck building realm? Yeah, one more project I'm working on for the last three years, I would say, it's heading in this direction. Yeah. Cool. Oh, wow. Amazing. But I, I think it will take a little bit more time because now I had to refocus on Terra Mystica Age of Innovation. If a game comes near its finishing state and is going into print, then there's a lot of work and you have right. to look over the rules again. And then there are some detail questions that pop up and so I, I visit the publisher nearly every, every or every second week to, to discuss things like that and I'm not on my main job just a big game designer, I also have a job where I work in a clinic and hospital so oh, cool. yeah, wow, wow. I'm part-time game designer so I have to split up my, my attention to game designing in my other job. Yeah, totally. Um... Well, thank you so much, uh, Helga, for your time. This was this was awesome to get to to get a small glimpse into into the world of uh, creating Terra Mystica and Gaia Project and um, everything moving forward. This was so much fun. Thank you so much thank for much. for joining. For um, and and everybody who's watching, stick around uh, because we're going to tell you how you can win yourself a copy of Gaia Project uh, that we're going to give away on the channel. Uh, because we love the game and we want more people to to play it, and so, uh, but we'll cover that after after we switch off with Helga. Helga, again, thank you, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. Thank you. Have a good time. Bye. Cool. Bye. Bye.
Wow. That well, that was a friggin' blast, wasn't it, Brian? That was great. He's so many interesting th things to say. I really enjoyed what he was saying about his new game. I'm very excited about that. And I know all the, all the questions you asked about um, uh, how we got into that design. It's just an amazing story. I I, I know you I know you want Age of Innovations. We're gonna try to snag ourselves a copy and and uh, pretend like we're gonna review it on this YouTube channel and see how that that see where that gets us. Uh, <laughs> so you try to get some early access going. We're desperate to play more Terra Mystica. Uh, I freaking I I love Terra Mystica. I've played. I don't know, over 100 games of Terra Mystica at this point through through BGA and uh, that sort of stuff. A few less of Gaia Project, but uh, I'm getting into Gaia Project now because of World Series of Board Gaming. Yeah, that, that was a blast. Um, but if you want to win a copy of Gaia Project uh, all throughout this series, stay tuned to all the other designer series as well because you can win a copy of their games too. We want to spread the word. We want to say thank you to Helga for being on the show and by putting another one of their games out in the world so if you're interested in winning a copy of gaia project which is a pretty good prize uh then be sure to comment down below on our U youtube channel specifically youtube channel if you're watching this on a another platform that's where we're going to randomly draw the comments from and we will announce the winner uh in our february newsletter recap to give people enough time to enter enough time to comment uh so if you're interested in that make sure you comment down below. And uh, if somebody sends you over here, mention their name because, well, you know, we like giving here at the World Series. And so maybe there'll be, maybe there'll be something in it for them too. You never know. Uh, so share this video with your friends if you want more entries into that or potential entries into something bigger. I don't want to spoil that just yet, but uh, be sure to comment down below. Comment what your favorite faction is in Terra Mystica or Gaia Project, or if you haven't played them, uh, why you're excited to try them out. Yeah, or anything re related to Terra Mystica, Gaia Project, or some of Helga's earlier games, if you played them, we always want to hear that. Uh, otherwise, seems like it's time for Fire and Ice to sign off. <laughs> this is Ice saying, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Fire saying, win your games. <laughs> yes, this will be an ongoing uh, stupid bit for all the designer series. And no, we will not stop. Uh, but thank you for tuning in and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one or potentially seeing you in Vegas.